Welcome back, friends. In the previous tutorial, we added dialog branching to our dialog player. In this tutorial, along with the dialog in the dialog box, we'll learn how to display images of our characters. But I have a confession to make. I have a bit of a secret motive in covering this topic. I want to show you how the XP dialog editor isn't just useful for storing dialog text, but also any text based data in your Godot projects. We have a bit of work to do, so let's get to it. Starting from where we left off, the very first thing we'll do is add a texture rectangle node as a child of the body 9 patch rectangle. This is the only new node we'll need this time around. Change the name and make sure the layout is set to top left. Then change the position to negative 16 by negative 200 and the size by 160 by 160. We're going to need some character textures for our tests. Unfortunately, I'm not really much of an artist, but thankfully I know a bunch of students who are more than happy to draw a few characters for us pro bono. I'll drag and drop these images into a new character texture folder. Now this is the part where a lot of people new to Godot development get a bit stuck. Godot needs to load these textures before we can use them, but where are we supposed to store all the file paths to all the textures we need to load? One solution would be to hard code the file paths right into the dialog player script, or maybe have a global auto loaded script that contains a huge list of things we need to load. That would work, and if it works, it's not technically wrong but I certainly wouldn't consider it an elegant solution. I'm pretty sure you've already guessed that we're going to use the XP dialog editor. We're going to create a dialog record that will act as a library for all our textures. In this way, whenever our dialog player loads a story file, we can also direct it to load all of the textures in the story. Open our test story file in the XP story file editor. Create a new dialog record and give it a name and description. Press edit and add a single node. This one node will contain a JSON list of all the textures on the story file. Each texture is a key value pair, with the name of the texture as a key and the file path as the value. Right after we load the story file in the dialog player, We'll search the story file for the texture library and load all of the files found here. While I'm here in the story file editor, I'll go ahead and make a test dialog record. Create a new record and give it a name and description, then press edit. Add start and end nodes as well as the dialog nodes containing the speaker and dialog tags as we've done many times before. Now our dialog has been written, but we want the images of our characters to show up when they're speaking. That's easy. Remember the texture names that served as the key in the key value pairs from before? Whenever you want an image to appear on your dialog, just place one of those little keys inside the start and closing image tags, along with the speaker and dialog tags. Our dialog player will use this key name to grab a reference to our loaded texture. When finished editing the texture library and the test dialog, save and bake the story file over the old files. Then head over to the dialog script where we'll finish implementing our feature. In the dialog player script, the first thing we'll do is add a reference to the new texture rectangle node so we can change its texture and make it visible and invisible when appropriate. Next, we'll add a new global variable. This variable called texture library will be a dictionary that holds references to our loaded texture resources. We can return a specific texture resource via its associated key, the same key from the story file's texture library. 
In the ready function, right after loading our story with the story file reader, we'll make a call to a new private function named load textures. In the load textures function, the story file reader can help us get the dialog ID of the texture library via the get DID via record name function. With the dialog ID in hand, we can get the text from our one and only node, NID1, in the story file's texture library dialog record via the get text function. Convert the raw JSON text to a GDScript dictionary with the parseJSON built in function. Then we can use a for loop to iterate over each key value pair. For each pair in the dictionary, we grab the file path to our image, load the image into a Godot texture resource, and finally place a reference to the resource in our dialog player's texture library. And now all the textures from our story file's texture library will be loaded when our dialog player starts. Now let's make sure the images show up in our dialog box. Down in the play node function, just like we did in our previous tutorial on dialog branching, check if the image tag is present in our node text. If it is, our trusty get tag text function will return the key from between the image tags and will pass the key to a new private function display image. The display image function is responsible for using the key to look up the texture resource in the dialog player's texture library and setting the return value as our texture rectangle node's texture property. Then of course we need to make sure the texture rectangle node is visible. When the player presses spacebar or picks a branching option, we need the texture rectangle node to become invisible again. So in the on option clicked and on dialog player pressed spacebar function, add a line of code to make the texture image invisible. Finally, don't forget to change the dialog record past the play dialog function to our new test dialog record. Then press F6 to run our scene. And there we have it, character textures loaded from our story file and displayed in our dialog box. Way back when I started this subtutorial on dialog players, I outlined a list of topics that I wanted to cover. However, because I think we've managed to sufficiently clear most of the important points you need to understand to develop your own projects using the XP Dialog Editor, I think this would be the last dialog player tutorial for a while. But don't worry, we have a lot of new tutorials coming this way. I'm in the process of prototyping a new RPG in Godot, and I plan on sharing the progress as I make it with you. Like the dialog editor, I've made a lot of interesting tools in Godot that support this game, and I'm excited to share them with you. So if you don't want to miss them, don't forget to subscribe. If you're curious about what I do from day to day, head over and follow me on Twitter where I post devlogs. Hope to see you again. Until then, happy devving.